welcome to this week's Ag Report. This week, uh, whether you are a homeowner or you have a ranch or a farm, uh, kind of wherever you are, you, sometime in your life you have probably seen uh, grasshoppers and, and kind of wondered, holy smokes, you know, the plague's coming in, what, what's the deal, that kind of stuff. So we're going to talk with uh, grasshoppers. We have our Ellis County Extension Agent Mark Arnold with us today. He's going to share some of his thoughts. Um, what kind of brought this along was uh, uh, back late June, uh, coming into the 4th of July weekend, we were, we were getting pretty dry. I actually did a, uh, uh, an ag report talking about it was dry. And then about two days later, we got a big unexpected rain. Uh, thankful rain. Appreciate that we got it. Uh, some of us had three, four inches worth of rain over a couple of days spell, which was a huge blessing around 4th of July. But just before that, we were, we were getting pretty hot, getting pretty dry. And uh, I live uh, in the community of Howard, which is south of Waxahachie, uh, just uh, about three or four miles. And uh, I was noticing uh, these waves of grasshoppers. And when I, I say waves, you know, there's always a threshold, an economic threshold when, when uh, bugs or insects or, or like that present a problem. And, you know, I'm not talking about just the one little hopper that'll flop up here or there kind of thing like we normally see every year. This was, as, as you kind of drove through the field, just pretend you're at the ocean. It was a continual rolling wave of hoppers that were driving out. And so that triggered the thought that uh, maybe we should have a little talk about this. Now, shortly after that, like I say, we got a rain. And uh, I had noticed, uh, like the old wives tale goes, uh, you get a big rain sometimes, those grasshoppers, they catch a cold and disappear on you, they die. And that, that has happened. Um, I see very few of them out there. But we're still going to talk about that a little bit today. And, and uh, so Mark, kind of uh, let us <coughs> inform us a little bit about what we were seeing and, and the wives' tale of they kind of uh, disappeared on us. And, and uh, you know, we were reminiscing there a little bit of years ago. Both of us have been around the block a, a time or two and seen some things. And when those grasshoppers come in pretty thick, whether you're talking about a yard or your flower beds or your hay field or your corn crop, they can really do some damage to that stuff. You bet. I mean, once those things reach maturity, they consume a lot of forage. And, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's real critical that uh, farmers, ranchers, homeowners, whoever, you know, whatever, whatever you're trying to protect, uh, start monitoring those things uh, relatively soon and relatively quick. Uh, just to kind of give a little background, there's about 150 different species of grasshoppers in the state of Texas, but only about five of them uh, are economically important to us. And, no, and, they, and those five different species cause about 90% of the damage that may occur. And those five species are the differential grasshopper, the red-legged grasshopper, the migratory grasshopper, the two-striped grasshopper, and the Packard grasshopper. But again, uh, those things are going to start to hatching out, usually around April or May. And normally, it's going to take anywhere between 40 to 60 days for those things to reach maturity. And uh, that's when, you know, they're harder to see at that time, but that's that's really when producers need to be out there scouting those fields. They need to find those things when they're in that first instar, or first or cu first couple of instars, and in as far as their life cycle is concerned, usually that when they're about a half inch long, there's actually going to be some control that can be done. Once those things reach maturity, control gets extremely difficult to that. So uh, again, it's easier to see them when they're big and, and, and full grown, but again, producers need to be out there scouting those hay fields, scouting those meadows, uh, uh, row crops, whatever the whatever uh, the, uh, the the economic uh, or the agronomic uh, commodity is we're talking about needs to be you know, we need to be looking at those things early on and again keep that April and May in mind as far as when they start hatching out. Sometimes those uh, we can see a, a hatch in June and even July depending on the weather. Normally, uh, where they're going to be in the you know kind of late spring situation as far as when they start hatching out. So, kind of keep an eye on them from that standpoint. Uh, normally, we see uh, big outbreaks or large numbers following some extremely dry 
situations and dry summers the or dry years the previous years uh those real bad outbreaks you know like if you think back 98 and and even early there's a couple of years in early 2000 where we had some real bad outbreaks those things kind of followed a, a, some uh, some real long extended drought situations so if there's re if there's dry conditions uh the previous year and or the year that the, uh, that the the current year, a lot of times they will we will see more of them hatch out. Those things, the eggs are laid in the bar ditches and uh, fallow fields and things like that. So, uh, you know, the, those uh, females are going to lay those eggs where there are some food sources for those young to come out. So, those are some areas that you probably want to be looking at. You know, those fence line areas, those tree line areas, the bar ditches and uh, you know early spring and just kind of be watching and walking through some of those uh, as well as the edges of your fields and uh, kind of looking for those smaller ones there and those little ones and then then uh, uh, you know kind of go from there as far as possibly initiating some control. Uh, there are some economic thresholds that we have standards on as far as hay fields and meadows and things like that and uh, uh, what we, uh, re what we those are kind of based on a square foot method and basically what you want to do is the producer just wants to go out into that meadow and just actually look down uh, you know if you just stand there and look straight down you're going to have about a square foot between your your feet there or just kind of estimate how many you are seeing per square foot you want to do this about 18 times across that uh, this is the easy way to do it you do it 18 times across that field then you take and uh, add all those numbers that you uh, per square foot that you all 18 of those numbers up divide that by two and that's going to give you the number of grasshoppers per square yard then we can kind of go from there if you start uh, seeing more than about 28 to uh, to 30 per square yard then we've probably got we're reaching some high levels there that we need to do some possibly initiate some control measures on so lots of things we can do and again there's lots and lots of products out there the main thing is is to uh, get that product that is labeled for your particular crop or commodity that you're trying to protect and uh, and kind of go from there uh, you know you mentioned something about some wet years uh, yes if we have a good wet spring normally uh, that, that impedes those things being able to hatch out of those bar ditches and areas like that. If it's wet there, they're not able to, to, to uh, hatch out and crawl out of the soil uh, like they would if it was really dry. So, uh, and there are also some natural predators, some natural enemies. Uh, you mentioned some of them maybe kind of get a cold and that's exactly what's hap what happens on some of those. The NOLO bait is actually formed from uh, the spores of this particular uh, uh, organism that will cause these things to get sick and die. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, there's lots of things out there that'll help help us out. You know, Mother Nature has a, has a unique way of keeping things in check. But again, we do need to be diligent and be watching out there. And, and you mentioned that there was, you know, seeing a lot of those things prior to uh, that J July 4th weekend. In, and we were starting to get a few reports like that. I think you know they were mostly isolated pockets of them, and uh, but uh, since that time we have not seen as many. So we pro I, I would feel that those rains that we got probably helped us a little bit. Uh, but at the same time, I would say uh, you know with the hay fields that we that are getting cut down and uh, the crop situation right now, I would say that producers need to be real diligent about scouting for those things. And again, just get out there and walk through those fields, walk through the edges of those fields. You know whether it be on a gator or uh, you know ATV or whatever, just get off and just kind of watch for those things. And again, be looking. The 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 big ones are easy to see, but right now we need to be finding those little half inch type uh, size, and then we can start uh, looking at doing some effective control. So good, good takeaway points. Uh, scout often, scout early, find them when they're young so that uh, you can do something about them. And then uh, be looking around the, the ends of the field, the trees, the ditches, the, the edges, that kind of stuff. Uh, because uh, if you can find them early, uh, I think you can do some barrier methods possibly on, on spraying, maybe not have to treat uh, the whole thing, but treat the, the edges, uh, kind of lap it as a barrier coming in there, uh, sa save a little bit uh, on there. Um, exactly. Probably watch, uh, watch what your neighbors are doing. If they're harvesting crops, uh, a loss of food source may change their direction a little bit and bring them in to you. 
uh, probably be aware of what's what's going on crop wise and everything. So uh, all, all good points uh, there, and we appreciate you uh, you know sharing some knowledge with us uh, on these things. You know, like I say, they they come and go, and it's not an every year thing, but uh, we do need to kind of watch out for them. They can do do some damage around the county, and I know the the producers, whether you're forage for cattle or, or crops, or you're just a, a homeowner that has spent a good bit of money on your yard, they can come in there and, and eat it up. I know that they'll appreciate these tips from you. As always, they can reach out to, to your office. Uh, they're off of Highway 35, uh, give you a call or something like that. I'm sure you've got some brochures and information you can, links you can send them with more details. You, you bet, John Paul. We, you know, we are located right on I-35 in the old uh, Waxhatchee Sub-Courthouse building. Our phone number here at the office is 972-825-5175. And we've got a lot of information about what we talked about. You mentioned some things on, on the homeowner side of that deal. We've got some information and some, some test results from the types of plants that those grasshoppers would leave alone in your landscape. And so we even have some listings and some, some rating, some plants rated to that as well. So, uh, you know, it, we've got a lot of different information along that and uh, as, as on this as well as other, our other areas. So give us a holler, give us a call, and, uh, and we'll go from there. Very good. Mark, we greatly appreciate it. Y'all take care now.